North Carolina Central is going to be picked, picked up, up and not for by Tim Daniel. There picked up now by CJ Moore. CJ Moore, no one even. This is Eagle Talk on the NCCU Sports Network. Here's your host, Chris Hooks. Hello, Eagle fans. Welcome to another edition of Eagle Talk. I'm Chris Hooks, the play-by-play voice here in North Carolina Central. Joining us on today's show, the head football coach of the Eagles, Jerry Mack, and we'll have on the quarterback for the Eagles, Malcolm Bell, who successfully delivered a win for NCCU to start off MEAC play with his three-touchdown performance, earning him MEAC Player of the Week honors offensively. Eagles also earned Defensive Player of the Week honors and Offensive Lineman of the Week through the league. So again, a very jam-packed show. We'll preview the contest against South Carolina State. We'll also catch you up on Michael Bell and see what he looks like off the field as well. So joining us here on the show today in this first segment is the head coach of the football program, Jerry Mack. Coach, first of all, thanks for joining us. No problem, Chris, as usual. Well, Coach, let's go ahead and jump into it. One and on Miak play. You beat Howard 27-22 this past Saturday. Just talk about the, you know, what you took away from that ball game now that you've had a chance to look back at the film. Well, we knew coming into the conference play, you know, we were going to have a chance to, to win, win the football game. You know, we got out of non-conference, that brutal schedule. So now we're kind of getting involved in teams that are very similar to, to our style of play in our mm -hmm. program. So, uh, you know, the guys came out, they played extremely hard. And, uh, you know, a little bit disappointed how we finished the football game. Uh, we still got some things that we got to clean up. But overall, you know, a win is a win, and, and we're excited and we're proud to have that win. You know, it really seemed like you got something from all facets of the game on Saturday. You know, you got to see Malcolm really step it up and kind of outduel a quarterback that everybody, you know, pits as the best one in the league. Defense forces some turnovers. And then the special team certainly did their job on kickoff coverage and all that and more. So it really seemed like there was some completeness about that ball game. It was. You know, I tell you, if we played like we did at Townsend the week before, we came out with that same intensity and we're learning how to play four quarters now. We continue to do that throughout the season. We're going to have a chance to, to really be in football games down the stretch and, and hopefully come out victorious. Were you at all nervous at first when Howard got the ball and drove down the field but was, was unable to score at that point? Not really, because that's kind of been their MO for the last few weeks. You know, they've started games out pretty good on their first drive, but then somewhere around the second second series, third series of games, that's when they kind of sputter a little bit. So we saw that tendency on film. We just had to do our play our game and stay the course. Take us through the touchdown, the first one that Malcolm threw. I know he was trying to do his best Colin Kaepernick impersonation mm -hmm. with that cross the field throw, but it was a perfect play, worked out. Big touchdown that really got us going. Right. It just throughout the week when we started game plan, you know, we had two weeks to prepare for Howard. There were some things that we saw uh, out of that formation uh, that we were going to be able to attack. So we kind of set the play up. If you go back and really review the film, there were about two or three times in that game where we lined up in that formation so we could see if we are going to get the correct look. So we were in a position where we could go ahead and take a shot down the field, and it just, you know, all 11 players were on the same page in that play. It really seemed like that Malcolm just started to really calm down after the, maybe that first drive. It really seemed like he kind of took charge. Uh, what did you see from him, and, and what did you what have you told him since that ball game? He's continued to grow as a player. You know, some of the mistakes that he made the first time he got a chance to step on the field are not the same mistakes he's making uh, now, and pretty much his third time as a, you know getting a lot of playing time. So he's continued to grow as a player, and that's what's going to happen to him as he matures in the system and as he continues to grow. And uh, we just kind of continue to tell him, you know, you don't have to win the game by yourself. Allow players around you to help you, and uh, we got some playmakers that that are stepping up. When you look at the defensive side, there was a name that I kept calling on Saturday. Jeremy Thompson was certainly one of them. Mm -hmm. C.J. Moore, who earned Defensive Player of the Week honors with an interception and a forced fumble. Felix Small also was in on a lot of plays as well. But it really seemed like as a unit, they really started to get things together. They are. It's starting to come together a little bit defensively for those guys. They kind of understand where everybody fits and where everybody belongs. Uh, obviously, C.J. has been playing good football for us uh, this, uh, this year. Uh, you know, Jeremy's finally started, people finally starting to see him spark a little bit. You know, I, he's one of my favorites because, you know, I saw him as a continue to be a player mm -hmm. in the spring, and he's continued to do that. So I'm looking forward to continue to work with him. Yeah, 15 tackles. I mean, he seemed to be everywhere, and, and that's, and the, he's young. He's a redshirt sophomore, right. so you got a long time left with him. I can only imagine how good he is going to get in this league. Right. He's got a chance to really be special. He's still learning the game a little bit. You know, he's right here homegrown. But I tell you, you know, he makes a commitment in the summertime, and as his body continues to mature, he's got a chance to be a really good player. When you look at just you for your first conference win, you know, as a team and as we continue to grow through the season, um, as a staff, where do you think you guys are? And as a team, do you think 
you know, it, we played well, but again, there's still some room to grow. Well, yes, the penalties are still, you know, uh, kind of a thorn in our side, and we got to kind of clean that up. Uh, you know, we got to go back to the drawing board because we got to do a better job of stopping the run. Mm -hmm. So we're going to put some people in some different situations and make some personnel changes to help that. Uh, but we're learning a lot about our team. Each and every week, we learn a little bit more about this football team. And right now, you know, the last two weeks, I'm very proud of the way they're playing. We just got to continue, and we got to continue to improve and eliminate the mental mistakes. Let's go ahead and just maybe jump up and just start to talk about South Carolina State. I mean, they're, you know, one of the, the perennial powers in this league. Buddy Pugh's kind of the, the dean of coaches in this league, and mm -hmm. I have a t ton of respect for him and his program. When you look at him and what he's done at South Carolina State, as we get set to take on them, I mean, it's 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 a tough task that awaits us. It really is. I mean, that's an extremely good defensive football team, and they're very very physical on the offense side of the football. So we got our hands full because they're a team that right now they're big, they're strong. I don't know where Coach P finds these players from, but uh, they they got some talent over there. And for you, you know, you you always have that goal, and this team is, is to win a championship. You won game one. You know, getting ready for game two, and it's not going to get any easier. You got South Carolina State this week, then we go on the road uh, to Baltimore, and then so on and so forth. You know, what do you see as just the the things that we need to do to keep getting better? We just continue to need to cut down the cut down the penalties, and our discipline needs to continue to get better as a program. I think those little things will all help us offense and defense, defensively scheme wise. I think we're right where we want to be, but it's those small things that's killing us right now. If we can eliminate those critical errors in those critical times and situations, then we got a chance to be a really good football team. Was there anyone that I haven't really mentioned as far as players that kind of um, stepped up and, and maybe after you've kind of reviewed the film? I know that a lot of offensive linemen did some good things, mm -hmm. defensive linemen as well. Was there anyone that really stepped up in your eyes, I guess, after watching the film of the game against Howard? Well, I think Deion Dante Wright is kind of the uh, you know the underdog or a young man has not been getting a lot of attention on the offense side of the ball. He's done a great job of catching the ball at the backfield and he's providing quality runs for us. Uh, on the defensive side of the ball, Jaquan Smith, our defensive lineman, has been playing good football. And again, he, he's just a young freshman. Uh, so those two guys are offensively and defensively. And also too, uh, you know, we got a couple of guys that's you know kind of flying under the radar and they're doing a good job for us. South Carolina State. If you could kind of paint a picture for the fans as far as scheme, what we'll see from them come Saturday. I think you're going to see a highly pressure team. You know, they're going to bring a lot of pressure at us on the offensive side of the football, uh, on the defensive side of the ball. They're going to try to run the ball at us uh, and attack our defense. We've been having some issues running, uh, stopping the run, so you can just rest assured that they're going to attack it. That's one of the, the beauties of offense and defense. You know, on defense, if you can't stop something, you can rest assured you're going to see it quite a bit. On the offense side of the ball, if we can't do something well, we can stay away from it. And that's the one thing, Jalen Simmons pr provides a lot of challenges uh, to most defense because of how big he is. Mm -hmm. Um, just as far as emulating that in practice, how do you emulate that? I guess he's kind of a similar to Andre Clark. He really is very similar. Uh, you know, he's done a great job this year of rushing. He's having a, a phenomenal season. So we got to do a good job of wrapping him up. You know, that's what we talk about to our defense all the time. Any fundamentals, fundamentals. That, that's the key to any great defense. And, and this is interesting as we go down to Orangeburg, kind of the, one of the more hostile environments in this league. Oliver C. Dawson Stadium holds about 20,000, and they tend to pack it. Uh, pretty often, and they get into it, um, and that's nothing new. We've been to Greenville right. and, and, and Dowdy Ficklin, so obviously we're going to be used to it. But again, the way we do things, I guess the crowd really doesn't make a factor as far as play calling and all that. It really doesn't. You know, like you said, we played in a hostile situation before. You know, last year our young men they played at Duke, so uh, we've been in, a, in in that big big grand scheme of things. We've been in that stage before, so you know that doesn't scare us at all. And again, I asked this about Charlotte, and I think this also kind of um, makes kind of fits here too. Last year they came here, kind of embarrassed us on national television. Forty-four to three was the final in that one, you know. And it was, I mean, it was all all South Carolina State. Is that is there a, as a coach? Do you have to kind of play psychologist a little bit this week to kind of get them through that, or is there they already have that mentality that you know that was kind of a fluke, and we're going to go out and try to prove ourselves? Well, you know, I don't think anything anymore is a fluke. You know, they didn't come to play last year that game. I reviewed that film from last year. And South Carolina State did a great job of getting after uh, NCCU. Uh, but, you know, I wasn't here. So, you know, hopefully we got to have a different mindset this year and we'll go out there and we'll compete a lot better. Well, Coach, we wish you the best of luck. Again, uh, hopefully we can look at, come back here next week and we're sit at 2-0 and conference play and really make things interesting in the MEAC. Thank you, Chris. That is head coach Jerry Mack as we get set. 
for a huge matchup between North Carolina Central and South Carolina State. We'll be on the air at 1.30 come Saturday afternoon on the NCCU Sports Network. When we return here on Eagle Talk, we'll talk to the quarterback of the Eagles, Malcolm Bell, right after this on the NCCU Sports Network. that grind, huh? Just trying to be like you. Careful what you wish for. No, that's not negotiable. We have to make sure the contract is tight. It's in the brief. Check paragraph five. I'm on my way out. What are you studying? Statistics. I flunked that. Have a good night. Hey, you forgot something. No, nah, man, that's you. Big Mac extra sauce, right? Right. Sometimes being deeply rooted... Thanks. ...means being simply connected. Wake up and get to Briggs Restaurants for Briggs 5 dollars weekday breakfast specials. Now available from 7 a.m. to 11 a.m. Monday through Friday. Just $5.99 for Briggs weekday breakfast specials. Available only at Briggs. Why should you join Team 23? The biggest savings. The best selection. The championship service. A lifetime guarantee. The best value. The people. There's only one team, Team 23. Team 23 means your engine is guaranteed for life, free oil changes for life, and much, much more. Michael Jordan Nissan is Team 23. Isn't it time for you to join Team 23? Michael Jordan Nissan, 15501 North of I-40. Welcome back to the second segment of Eagle Talk here as we bring on Malcolm Bell, the quarterback here at North Carolina Central. Getting you ready for the matchup between North Carolina Central and South Carolina State on the gridiron coming up this weekend at 1.30. We'll be on the air for that contest. All right, Malcolm, let's talk about uh, this past contest about against Howard. Uh, first of all, uh, congratulations on the win. Congratulations on MEAC Player of the Week. And um, if, you, if I told you last week coming into that ball game, that you were going to outduel one of the best quarterbacks in this conference. Would you have uh, taken that, uh, taken that uh, I guess, my observation? <laughs> well, I mean, yeah, uh, you know, I had a lot of faith in myself, and I've gained confidence throughout the game. So, yeah, I would have I took you, that. You, okay. Yeah. Well, again, I thought it was a spectacular performance on your part. I know there's some things probably on film that right. um, you certainly can work on. Um, but what did you see and what have you seen on film that, that maybe, all right, I did this okay and maybe I need to work on this? Uh, well, the mental, the mental errors that I had against Towson, they weren't there. Uh, you know, Coach Mack, he laid out a good plan for us, and we just executed it. Everything was pretty much open. What he wanted us to run and the schemes, they were, they were pretty much in shape. You know, it's funny. In, in, I think the one dynamic that, that you do bring, there was a lot of running involved, 66 yards on Saturday. And it was, you made some spectacular plays. I think the one that you wish you could have back was the one where you got the first down and, and fumbled it. Yeah. But again, to get to that point, I thought it was a spectacular play, and that's a dynamic that a lot of people um, maybe doubt with you a little bit. Well, yeah, I mean, Coach always tells me, you know, if everything breaks down, run. If you're not sure, run. Uh, you have great legs, so just use them. Is there a quarterback, professional college that, uh, you know, another colleague at another college that you kind of like to see, or is there a professional quarterback you kind of emulate yourself after? Uh, I don't really emulate myself after him, but I really watch Braxton Miller a lot. Uh, that's probably my favorite quarterback right now, although he's hurt, but yeah. yeah. Well, I, I really enjoyed seeing your Colin Kaepernick impersonation for the first <laughs> touchdown because that's my guy for the 49ers. But um, just talk about that play and what you saw. And, I mean, it just showed incredible arm strength throwing it literally across the field. Right. Well, uh, Coach, Coach Mack, we worked on a play all week, two weeks. We had two weeks to prepare for him. So we probably ran the play ten times every practice. And he said he'll be wide open, and as soon as he called the play, I'm like, all right, I'm just going to just roll around, just fake out the safety and throw it back. Yeah. Well, it's funny. Having played football, it's amazing when, you know, those plays happen. It's kind of like that's your moment. You have to take advantage yeah. of it. Did you at all get nervous or anything? Yeah, I was. I didn't want to overthrow him. Yeah. So usually, well, the play was designed to, uh, you know, it's like a post, so just throw it to the, to the, uh, the goal post. Mm -hmm. But... Adrian stopped. He was wide open. So, you know, I thought he was going to drop it, though, because it was in the air for so long. Yeah. So, yeah. 
Well, I, it really seemed, I, I think that really calmed you down. Not saying you were really nervous, but I think yeah. that kind of settled you in even further. Um, you know, just through the rest of the game, two more touchdown passes. Take us through, first of all, the, Del, the one with Delquan Jackson. Well, I knew we needed a score before the half. That would, you know, uh, raise our hopes up. So I see them coming across, and I knew I couldn't throw it from the position that I was in. So I, you know, broke the pocket, and I knew I had to put it on them because if not, it would be an interception or, you know, uh, a bust. So I just threw it, and he didn't think he caught it <laughs> until he started running. So. Well, again, I don't know how the guy for Howard didn't intercept it, but again, tremendous play. And then you got a third touchdown later on to, to Quint Atkinson. It was like a beautiful screen set up yeah. down the left side. It was just a perfect play call by Coach Mack, Coach Taylor. And it really seems like the offense is really starting to come together. I mean, you got the, the Adrian Wilkins, the Quint Atkinsons, Anas, Delquan. Right. I mean, in the backfield, you got Deontay Wright. I mean, there are a lot of weapons that you guys are starting to put together. Yeah, and the O line. And I'm really proud of. Uh, of Sterling. He came in, the freshman, he came in, graded out at a 90%, and he really held his own out there. Well, let's go ahead and give a little credence to the O-line. Talk about them, because, you know, they give me heck about <laughs> me not talking about them enough, so we'll give you the opportunity to give them a shout-out. Well, yeah, you know, they're underrated in the MEAC uh, from last year, but right now they have confidence. O Coach O has uh, instilled in them that, you know, they're our engine. We can't go if they don't go. So, you know, I've never really been able to sit in the pocket like I have this year. I can just sit back there and, you know, pick apart the defense, and I, uh, you know, I owe it to them. Well, they're really going to get a test this week. One of the best defensive lines in the conference awaits us down in Orangeburg. Have you seen film on South Carolina State? Yeah, I have, yesterday. Well, it, it, what have you seen, and what, you know, what do you expect? Well, it's just going to be the battle in the trenches. It's whoever gets it done, offensive line, defensive line, our defense and their offensive line. Uh, as far as athletes, you know, they have athletes, but we have athletes too. So, like I said, it's just a battle in the trenches. And I guess maybe we're going to see a little bit, and I hope this isn't the case, but at some point you're going to have to run them maybe a little bit some this week. And I, it, against A&T, it looked like it worked a little bit when, when their quarterback had to run. Right. Well, now I have to learn how to slide too, you know. Coach Taylor is going to teach me how to slide this week. Well, and you can also go talk to Coach Kerner down the hallway from us. You okay. can certainly learn how to just yeah. make sure it gets your, your leg underneath you. That's all. Anyway, did you, you didn't play baseball growing up? No. Not at all? Nope. With an arm like that, nobody ever asked you to play? Yeah, my high school, but no. No? That's all right. <laughs> Malcolm, as, I mean, you know, South Carolina State came into to Durham last year and pretty much uh, put a whooping on us, so right. to speak. They, they handled us pretty well, 44-3 to in Durham on national television. Has that been talked about at all coming into this week? Uh, kind of. We don't want to, you know bring a lot of negativity in it but what people don't know the coaches don't know we had a players meeting last night on the field in the dark uh, just saying how important this game is to our season you know they're a top team in the MEAC you know we go in and defeat them the sky's the limit so everybody you know we don't really think about last year because that's way in the past yeah. and we obviously did not come out to play so you know I expect a better showing this week. It really seemed like, again, I asked Coach this, and, and you can kind of comment on this as well. It really seemed like as a team, offense, defense, and special teams, you had some really good moments against Howard. I guess the next step is to make it 60 minutes worth. Yeah. Um, well, uh, you know, the fourth quarter, we really uh, just dropped the ball. I mean, they just – well, do you think do you think it was the thing maybe you guys up 27 to 9 kind of put it on cruise control a little bit? Yeah, but we weren't trying to. I mean, you know, stupid penalties, unsportsmanlike stuff like that. Uh, we just we just got to cut down on the penalties and, you know, that's what we really have to do. That's all right. Malcolm, let's talk about you off the field. Uh, you know, you've been here. This is your third year here as you uh, kind of matriculated through the years. You know, so I guess you're a junior in the classroom. Yes, sir. What's your major and, in, in, you know, what, what are your interests off the field? Uh, business and administration is my major. Uh, you know, I just like to do what every, you know, college kid likes to do. I like to play video games, stuff like that. But uh, I really, uh, I like music, stuff like that. What, what, what do you want to do with your major when you get done here at North Carolina uh, Central? I would like to be a database administrator. That's really caught my eye. I really like that kind of stuff. And I, I will want to try coaching if that opportunity presents itself. What is it about being a database administrator? Just being in front of the computer, just being, you know, in the office, stuff like that. I have a friend that does something like that with SAS. Maybe we'll okay. get you in contact with him. Yeah, that would be cool. <laughs> Malcolm, seriously, though, like, um, you know, if, if someone 
asked you, what is something about you that a lot of people don't know? What would that be? Hmm. I listen to a lot of rock music. Rock music? Yeah. What's your favorite rock group or song? Mm, I would have to say Dance Gavin Dance. By? That's well, the group? That's the group. Okay, all right. Yeah. So this is kind of a, a contemporary, like, I guess nowadays type, right? You don't like, like, Metallica? No. no. You, don't like, you don't like Metallica? No, I never tried them out. Never tried them? <laughs> Maybe we'll have to put some Metallica in yeah. on the pregame music just for, just for you. Okay. <laughs> Well, Malcolm, best of luck this week against South Carolina State. Best of luck here the rest of the season. We're certainly glad you came on and took the time out here on Eagle Talk. Thank you, Chris. That's Malcolm Bell, redshirt sophomore quarterback here at North Carolina Central. We'll put a final wrap on this edition of Eagle Talk right after this. Define the fabric of a team. It's not selfish. It's not boastful, it's about many, sewn together to reach one common goal. But in order to win, you must learn to work together. Central University is one of our nation's most prized assets. Our law school ranks fourth in the nation for clinical opportunities. We offer cutting edge technology in the biosciences. We help students master their craft. At North Carolina Central University, we are a first choice premier institution. That'll do it for this edition of Eagle Talk. Certainly glad you took the time to watch today's program. Want to thank all the students here in the TV studio here at North Carolina Central. Especially want to thank the director of the TV studio here at North Carolina Central, Felicia Casey Hicks, for all her help in today's show. Remember to stay up to date with all 14 sports here at North Carolina Central. Check out www.nccueaglepride.com the official website of NCCU Athletics. Remember, we'll be on the air Saturday at 1.30 as North Carolina Central and South Carolina State battle for MEAC supremacy here in the early conference slate. So long, everybody. Carolina Central is going to be picked Pick up, up and knocked for by Tim Daniel. There picked up now by CJ Moore. CJ Moore, no one even. This has been an exclusive presentation of the NCCU Sports Network.